Up to now, when I'm introducing mods in various videos, I tend to keep a theme about them. All aesthetic mods, mods to get started, stuff like that. I've realized that I've never just shown off mods that I personally love. I've got some absolute bangers for you today. As always, I'm going to avoid covering mods I've already covered in previous videos, so these should all be new to you. So me personally, I'm pretty picky when it comes to my portrait mods. Ideally, it's not too much of a departure from the original style, and it changes most, if not all, of the portraits to minimize inconsistencies. I've got Nyapu's portraits turned on. These are inspired by Dong's portrait mod, which in turn was inspired by Harvest Moon, and I'm absolutely in love with these. Look at this. Look at that. It pretty much fits the art style of the game, uh, other than maybe like the outline, but other than that, it's, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, let's see, I love, oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, it, it may, some could say, maybe it changes some of the characters a bit too much, but me personally, I, I'm sold. Just absolutely sold, look at that. Now, I would like to see perhaps an angry face. Oh, that doesn't, ugh, that doesn't give you a face. Let me see if I can catch someone next to a trash can. Here we go. Yeah, so every single portrait in the game has been changed. Yes, all of the different emotions. Yes, even the maple syrup bear. But not only that, it also covers Stardew Valley Expanded, Ridgeside Village, and a couple of one-off character mods like Mr. Ginger. It's pretty much got everything you could ask for, so this is definitely a portrait mod that I'm a fan of. For this next mod, I skipped ahead a couple of days because it has a special effect the day of and after it rains. This is the Dynamic Reflections mod, and on days that it rains, it'll add puddles all around the valley. Not only that, you can see your reflections in the water. And this doesn't just hold true for puddles. If we come on over here to the mountain lake, you can see that my reflection is in any body of water. And I, I just wanna point this out because I played around with it quite a bit. This is a extremely customizable mod. Let's see, it is dynamic reflections. So if I go to water settings, I can set how far away from me my reflection is so it's a bit farther away i like putting it at one because it, it looks the most natural to me me personally i've turned the alpha layer and that's how transparent it is a lot down it starts out like full and i also like brought all of these sliders down a bit to dull the reflection a bit because you can see if i don't have that alpha layer down it's very vibrant and I just feel like it wouldn't be that clear, but probably my favorite part about this mod. As it gets darker here, you're going to notice that the sky starts to reflect in the water, but as it gets later in the night, it starts to become more and more clear. I absolutely love this mod. In fact, it reminds me of one of my favorite points of a Pokemon game I played, Pokemon Omega Ruby. There's a specific route where if you walk across a bridge at night, you can see the reflection of the starry sky in the water, and it's an absolutely magical moment. And this just reminds me of that. Coming off of that mod, we have a pretty simple one, Cuter Coops and Better Barns. All it does is redesign the inside of Coops a bit, and it also increases the amount of space you have just a little bit just in case, you know, if you have your Cooper barn completely filled up, then it won't be as much of a hassle. There's permanent decorations added all around the place, and you can change the color of this wall. If you don't want it to be blue, you want it to be green. It is completely customizable. And of course, this applies to every version of, ooh, the luau started. This applies to every version of the coop and the barn, respectively. Let's go check out the barn real quick. Here's the barn. Oh, it adds a whole table with sittable seats. Yeah, I just, the barn in the coop is always an area that I forget is decoratable. And even though you could technically do a lot of this on your own if you wanted, I just like it being here. It's a good mod for that. It makes it pretty. You know, it's usually one of those spots that's completely uncustomized for most people, so it adds a little bit of personality, which I can appreciate. I feel like the only reason that we ever remember to go to the festivals is because you get this notification at the bottom of the screen whenever it starts. It's impossible to miss. This mod called Stardew Notification does the same thing for many other missable events. So today's the 12th of summer. Tomorrow is Alex's birthday. If we go to sleep, 
On the next day, we get a notice that it is Alex's birthday. Also, weeds have damaged my farm and there's seashells on the seashore. I believe that's because it's crab season? Also, if you have a bunch of machines working on your farm, exiting your house, it'll show you everything you have to do. Cave mushrooms are ready and fish ponds are ready. If I had these crystallariums filled up, it would give me notifications for that. If I had the crab pots filled up, it'd give me notifications for that. If I had crops ready to harvest, pretty much anything you need to do, it can show a notification for you. That was very loud. Another one of my favorite features is if it is someone's birthday and you forget to give them a gift until 5 p.m., it'll give you a reminder to give them a birthday gift. If I were to use this mod on my own, I'd probably, it's completely customizable. You can add the notifications or remove them for whatever you want. I would probably just have the notifications for people's birthday because I am awful at remembering that. This next mod is an absolute godsend for me. So you know the whole rigmarole you go through every single time you come back from a bit of exploring. Maybe you had a mine strip, maybe you went foraging out in the forest and you just have a full inventory that you need to sort all through before you can end your day because no one likes a messy inventory, right? And normally you have to go through all of your chests. You're like, oh, add to the existing stacks, add to existing stack over and over again, right? Guess what? Convenient inventory, one button. It automatically gets sorted to all of the chests that it can be sorted to. And you'll notice that basic fertilizer wasn't sorted out because it just wasn't in any of my chests. Not only that, but if you really don't want something to be sorted out, if you hold the alt button, you can favorite an item and it won't get sorted. So you can keep it in your inventory if you'd like. So this next mod is a thinker. I'm gonna outright say it is called Combine Machines. This allows you in your inventory to basically combine any amount of the same type of machine to get them to work better. So I can take these eight furnaces, stack them onto this other furnace, and that's a stack of nine of the same furnace. What exactly does that do? Well, there's two different modes. Personally, I like setting it to increase speed mode. So basically, speaking of increased speed mode, uh, this is going to work almost nine times as fast as a regular furnace. Now there is a penalty that you get every time you combine more and more, so it's not quite nine times the speed. However, it should still be a lot faster. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a way to save space when you really think about it with a little bit of penalty. So I, I really feel like I'm saying this for every single mod. This next one's crazy. This one is called Skillful Clothes. This mod, you, so okay, you know how normally the only things that have stats are rings and boots. This adds stats to not all, but many pieces of clothing. You can start off with the farmer pants. I never changed my pants. This is the pair of pants that you start the game with. Plus one farming just off rip. And then there's all of these other clothing items you can craft with cloth at Emily's. You can buy them from various places. And a lot of them have very unique effects, such as all of the breastplates, which you get whenever you tailor cloth and one of the material bars. So copper bar, iron bar, gold bar, iridium bar, all of these give you increasing defenses. And then there's a couple of random items and uh, Lewis's lucky shorts that I really like. Studded vest, plus two attack. Happy shirt, slightly increases your popularity, which means anytime you talk to someone or give someone a gift, you get more friendship than usual. The crab cake shirt, which is made from tailoring crab cakes, gives you the effect of crab cakes plus one speed and plus one defense. Prismatic shirt, which of course you need a prismatic shard to make, gives you a permanent plus 25 max energy. Star shirt emits a constant light, so it's basically like having a light ring. Trimmed lucky purple shorts gives you plus one luck, which is very powerful. However, if you talk to Lewis while wearing them, he will lose friendship with you, which is a fun, like actual effect. I love that. And then all of the cowboy hats, if you just walk by your cow, you'll pet them automatically. A lot of really neat effects here that aren't in the original game, and this isn't even close to all of the effects. Uh, there's one shirt that is like a reference to Link from Legend of Zelda, and that gives you a discount in the Adventurer's Guild. So many different effects, I couldn't possibly go over all of them, but it's a mod that makes collecting all of the clothes actually fun and worth it, because I don't know about y'all, that's nothing I've ever really done in Stardew Valley, but with this mod, 
I just might. So one thing I'm absolutely going to do whenever I do a modded playthrough is I'm going to add new festivals, new holidays, just to liven things up a bit in between the already existing holidays. This one's a bit interesting. It's called Festival of the Mundane, and it actually happens the same day that Spirit's Eve starts, which a lot of people would consider one of the more boring holidays of the game. And to access it, you need to go into the sewers. Oh my God, this is pretty. Oh, neat, I didn't think it'd be like this. So it's essentially a celebration of the shadow people as I understand it. I'm just gonna explore a little bit here. Well, hi friend, welcome to the Festival of the Mundane. All right, Hat Mouse is here with a couple of special hats. Now, as I understand, if you wear any of these masks that look like a shadow person, including the shamanic mask, it kind of works like the slime ring does, where when you wear them, you're not going to be attacked by any shadow people style enemy. So the shamans, the shadow brutes, the archers, things like that. And there's a lot of them too. It's really cool. You know what? Just in the spirit of the holiday. Why not? Look at that! Oh, and it's got the band and everything. That's cute. I like that. Uh, I'm kind of curious about all these big do- Oh, can I go swimming? Ooh, okay. Let's talk to the people in here. Just a little icky. I don't care what anyone says. Taking a bath is my favorite part of the festival of Monday. Well, this is the sewers. I can't help but notice that they recolored the green water to blue. Don't tell anyone, but I, okay. All right, buddy. Okay. As the season comes to a close and the weather gets colder, it sure is nice to take a dip in this nice warm pool. Okay. I accidentally swallowed some water. Oh, that's off. That's gonna, you're dead, dude. You're gone. Just swapping back before I forget to. Oh, oh. I wonder if I could sneak back in and get the disguise from the hat map. Wait, what do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? Wait, do they kick you out if you're not wearing the mask? Interesting, I didn't know that that was a requirement. Well, now that I know, let's get another one. The imposing mask, of course, how could I not? As I understand, there's also a mini game to play. Okay, henchmen. Step right up, how'd you like to play a game of pin the nose on the goblin? Prizes include a golden pumpkin and a void egg, One only one of each prize for customer. I'm, you're blindfolded and will automatically. Go right. I'm going right. <laughs> this is cool. Smelly fish. Move far to the left. Wrong way, move left, okay. I pinned the nose 4.5 inches on the center. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a timed thing. And I, I'm assuming the second best reward is a void egg. And the best would be the golden golden pumpkin. That's really cool. Who's this big bad boy? Hello there, stranger. I sent something different about you. Yeah, I'm a dude. That's the problem. I like this. A little bit of fun added functionality to one of the more boring holidays. Although I do gotta say, I'm surprised they didn't use some of the unused sprites like the Shadow King, which I went over in my cut content video if you haven't seen that. Now to close this video out, I'm gonna go through five really small sprite replacement mods that you can just install really quickly. All of them pretty much just need content patcher. Animal Crossing Dig Spots replaces the worms with the Animal Crossing style digging spots if you've ever played an Animal Crossing game. Overgrown Mailbox just adds a little bit of ivy to the mailbox. This pairs really nicely if you have the medieval building style mod. And the color of the leaves changes with the season as well. Terracotta Garden Pots. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the way the garden pots normally look in the game. They're a little chunky is the word I would use. And this kind of makes them look a bit more like a regular garden pot. It's, it's just a lot cleaner. Haystack Silo Replacement. This is a silo, hold your pieces of hay. This this can mix a lot more with just your general decorations. Like it looks nice next to that coop. Whereas with the regular silo, I feel like we're always hiding it way in the corner so that no one ever sees it because it's really just one hulking giant <laughs> ugly building. I don't know, that's my thoughts. This looks like an actual decoration that you could like weave into your the rest of your farm. And finally, Pepper Rex Horse. I don't know, it fits so well, doesn't it? Like it makes sense to have a dinosaur horse. I don't know. 
Looks nice. Nothing looks wrong with it. That's a horse. Thank you all for watching. If you happen to need a guide on how to install mods, I do have a guide for that, which I'll link in the top right corner of the screen in a card. If you're on console, cope. Thank you all for watching. As always, if there's a mod that you would like me to cover, please tell me in the comments, or maybe I could add it onto my list of mods that I'm going to add when I eventually do a modded playthrough, which I still do want to do. I think it'll come soon, just off the top of my head. See you all in the next one, and good night.